July 1969. In the midst of a moist and sweltering summer season under the hot Florida sun, NASA is rapidly proceeding towards the countdown for the first of three attempts to land on the lunar surface before December 31st. The first attempt is Apollo 11. Eleven is commanded by an all-veteran crew of spaceflight. Neil Armstrong cut his teeth on analyzing emergencies in the field firsthand when his Gemini 8 spacecraft started spinning out of control in 1966. With prior X-15 rocket plane flight experience, Neil and his crew were assigned to the fifth manned mission in the Apollo program back in 1967. But not until a year ago did they learn that Eleven would be the first attempt to take a manned spacecraft to the lunar surface. The soft-spoken Armstrong is in command of Apollo 11. Buzz Aldrin last flew on Gemini 12, the final flight in that program, where his superior navigational skills led his compatriot, Jim Lovell, to a successful docking with their Agena target vehicle. And the procedures he developed regarding spacewalks helped solve a challenge that had long been plaguing the American space program. He is the lunar module pilot, acting as a guidance and systems engineer, while Neil controls the LEM to a safe landing on the moon. Finally, Michael Collins last flew on Gemini 10, where he made a successful spacewalk on a 50-foot tether to retrieve a package from that mission's Agena ATV. He will not be walking on the moon. Rather, he will stay in lunar orbit aboard the Apollo 11 command module, listening vigilantly to Armstrong and Aldrin as they attempt to make a landing. In the event they get stranded in orbit and need a rescue, or worse, are unable to make it back to the command module, designating Collins as the sole survivor of Apollo 11. The eyes of the world are upon the trio as they complete the final phases of their training and are entered into quarantine from the outside world. The public pressure and media attention is both exciting and exhausting. The three are training for the mission of a lifetime. The very nature of Apollo 11 and the high danger it entails means that this will be the final spaceflight for all three astronauts regardless of whether or not it is successful. Risking the life of a member of the first lunar crew after successfully bringing them back home, it just won't happen. Being assigned to the first lunar landing is essentially a notice of retirement from the astronaut corps. They have one chance, and one chance alone, to make a successful landing. Every move they make once on the surface of the moon is extensively rehearsed and ranges from reading a plaque to deploying television cameras, taking photographs, planting a flag, and constructing a small battery of scientific instruments known as ESEP, or Early Apollo Surface Experiments Package, a precursor to ALSEP. This rudimentary and primitive collection of sensors includes a retro-reflecting mirror for laser distance marking between the moon and the earth, several local seismometers, and a radiometer. Armstrong and Aldrin are scheduled to walk outside their lander for a meager 160 minutes. The two spacecraft assigned to the fifth manned flight in Apollo are Command and Service Module number 107, nicknamed Columbia and Lunar Module Number 5, nicknamed Eagle. The world watches and holds its breath as the countdown to a launch on July 16, 1969, turns from weeks to days to hours.
This is CBS News color coverage of Man on the Moon. The epic journey of Apollo 11. This morning, the launch of astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. The start of the trip to the moon. Sponsored by the International Paper Company, where good ideas grow on trees. And by Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System. And by Kellogg's. Kellogg's puts more in your morning. Here from CBS News Apollo headquarters at Kennedy Space Center, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good morning. It's T minus one hour, 29 minutes, and 53 seconds, and counting in just an hour and a half. If all goes well, Apollo 11 astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins are to lift off from pad 39A out there on the voyage man always has dreamed about. Man embarks today on history's greatest adventure. Here at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, a massive, complex, and tragic vehicle waits to launch three American explorers into space, into the future, toward the lunar surface. The dawn of this day heralded the dawning of a new age, for with the first steps on the moon, man's strides across the universe really begin. It's a time of exhilaration, reflection, hope, fulfillment, as a centuries-old dream starts toward reality. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. Three men who represent the spearhead of an effort that involves over half a million engineers and technicians. Representing the dream of an entire nation and carrying with them the aspirations of an entire species. Apollo 11 is man's first attempt to demonstrate the ability to go to the moon, to land there, and to return to Earth. On July 16, 1969, at 6 a.m., the three astronauts wake up and prepare to embark on the most daring and iconic adventure upon which man has ever embarked. A non-stop, three-day flight to the moon's Sea of Tranquility, a large, flat, dried lava sea that hardened billions of years ago. The next stop for these men, the moon. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the six minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11. Now five minutes, 52 seconds and counting. We're on time at the present time for our planned liftoff of 32 minutes past the hour. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin now has completed the status check of his personnel in the control room. All report they are go for the mission, and this has been reported to the test supervisor, Bill Schick. The test supervisor now going through some status checks. Launch operations manager, Paul Donner, reports go for launch. Launch director, Rocco Patron, uh, now gives a go with five minutes, 20 seconds and counting. Coming up shortly, that swing arm up at the spacecraft level will come back to its fully retracted position. This should occur at the five minute mark in the count. In the meantime, the lunar module tele telemetry has been powered down. We took a good look at Eagle, and it looks good. The spacecraft test conductor for the lunar module reported that Eagle was go. The swing arm now coming back to its fully retracted position as our countdown continues. T minus four minutes, 50 seconds, and counting. Skip Chauvin informing the astronauts that the swing arm are now coming back. The astronauts will have a few more reports coming up in the countdown. The last business report will be from Neil Armstrong at the 45 second mark in the count when he gives a status on the final alignment of the stabilization and control system. We're now passing the four minute 30 second mark in the countdown, still go at this time. minutes 15 seconds the test supervisor now is informed launch vehicle test conductor norm carlson you are go, go for launch from this time down uh carlson uh, handles the countdown as the launch vehicle uh begins to build up we're now hitting the four minute mark four minutes mark four minutes and counting we are go for apollo 11. we'll go on an automatic sequence uh, starting at three minutes and seven seconds Forty-five seconds and counting, and the final uh, 
abort checks between uh, several key members of the crew here in the control center and the astronauts. Launch operations manager Paul Donnelly wished the crew on the launch team's behalf good luck and Godspeed. Three minutes, 25 seconds and counting. We're still go at this time. We'll be coming up in the automatic sequence about uh, 10 or 15 seconds from this time. All still go at this time. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Firing command coming in now. We are on the automatic sequence. We're approaching the three-minute mark in the count. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three. We are go with all elements of the mission at this time. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. The moon was a metaphor for the unattainable. You might as well ask for the moon, they used to say. Or you can no more do that than fly to the moon. For most of our history, we had no idea what it was. Of all the events surrounding Apollo 11's landing on the moon on July 20th, 1969, my most vivid recollection is its unreal quality. But if you turned off the biplay and stared into that black and white television monitor, you could glimpse that we humans had entered the realm of myth and legend. seconds and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We've continued to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for liftoff. T minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates the third stage completely pressurized. 80 second mark has now been passed. We'll go on full internal power at the 50 second mark in the countdown. Guidance system goes on internal at 17 seconds, leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. We're approaching the 60 second mark on the Apollo 11 mission. T minus 60 seconds and counting. We pass T minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong just reported back. It's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 50 second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. 32 minutes past the hour. Lift off the ball.
go today. This is Houston, Roger out. Roger, girls. Apollo 11. Houston, you are go for staging, over. With the translunar injection maneuver completed right on schedule, Collins docked Columbia with Eagle perfectly on the first try, and subsequently ejected it from the third stage of their massive launch vehicle. The practice and rehearsing of the previous missions, Apollos 7, 8, 9, and 10, were beginning to pay off. Apollo 11 then settled down into the 75-hour coast to the moon. The crew partook in a couple television broadcasts, some scheduled and some improvised, to carefully inspect the docking, probe, and drogue to ensure they would work once in orbit of the moon. Can you see a test key on the uh, NBC? That's affirmative. Uh, it appears that uh, can't quite tell what program we look like we're in poo. Uh, we'll see you punching in uh, a verb uh, 35, I think it is. Over. Yeah, might as well uh, tell the ink up, or tell the GNCs, and everybody hold on their hand, don't push the enter button. Right. That, we see a real display now.
Unfortunately, we only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with the TV camera. So uh, your view now is probably better than ours is. Roger, we copy. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, if you could uh, comply, we'd uh, like to see uh, some smiling faces up there. If you could give us some interior views, I'm sure everybody would like to uh, see you over. Okay, we'll uh, reconfigure the TV for that. Roger. At 80 hours into the flight, Apollo 11 darted behind the moon out of contact with NASA and prepared for the command and service module engine burn that would place the combined spacecraft into a circular orbit above their landing site. And we're showing about uh, 10 minutes and 30 seconds to LOS. I would like to remind you to enable the BD roll on the auto RCS switches, over. Roger, and uh, confirm you want uh, PCM low going uh over the hill, over. That's uh, affirmative, 11. The tired astronauts refined their orbit and went to sleep. Then, at 95 hours, the day of destiny came. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. Good morning from the black team. Good morning. Ah, good morning. Uh, we got about two minutes to uh, LOS here, uh, Mike. Oh, good morning, Ron. You guys wake up early. <laughs> yeah, you're about two minutes early here on the wake up. Looks like you're really uh, thawing them away. You're right. Uh, 11 Houston, uh, for planning purposes, uh, you can go ahead and take the monocular uh, into the limb with you. Armstrong and Aldrin waved goodbye to Collins one last time and sealed the hatch between the two spacecraft. Columbia and Eagle subsequently undocked and the two crews examined each other. It was time to land on the moon. Eagle, Houston, we rig you now. You're a go for PDI, over. Roger, understand. Stabilization control circuit breakers. Thank you, Gimbal AC, closed. Thank you, Gimbal AC, closed. Look at bigger. And override off. Gimbal enable. State scale 25. Eagle Houston, your alignment is going, Yags. On my mark, 3.30 till ignition. Roger. Mark, 3.30 till ignition. Roger, copy. My translation for jet. That was a couple on. Well, I enjoyed being in the command module by myself. It was a happy little home. Uh, all the machinery was working properly. Uh, and uh, my, my concerns uh, were not within the command module, but simply that something might go wrong with the uh, LAM, with the lunar module, and these two guys might get stuck on the surface of the moon. That was my, my main concern. at altitude about 46,000 feet, continuing to descend. Python. Dips arm. Raj, dips arm. One, zero. Alex. Hitting 10%. Percent. Lost state of flight. Dodge copy. Going on half time? Uh, let's wait till they get through the throttle. Half time. Let's wait till they get through the throttle. They should be through about now. Go ahead, try half time. Okay, Houston, we've lost them. Tell them to go half time, Yelda.
Buzz monitored the landing procedure, their computer began giving them master alarms indicating work overloads. It could not handle both the landing and rendezvous radar programs at one time. The flight controllers on the ground were helpless. All they could do was listen as the two astronauts struggled against time. But before that problem was over, Neil looked out the LEM window and realized that the guidance computer was steering them straight towards a football stadium-sized crater with car-sized boulders inside. Neil immediately took manual control and leveled off his descent, flying at a high rate of speed above the lunar surface. As Neil looked desperately for a safe place to land, his fuel level went down and down and down. Thank you. 
Lunar Module 5 Eagle hit the moon with only 17 seconds of descent propellant remaining. All of a sudden, there was silence. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Shut down. Ocean control, both auto descent engine command over and off. We're there. Engine arm off. Port 13 is in. We've had shut down. We copy it down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Houston, Tranquility Base. 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 Houston, Tranquility Stay. Vito. Stay. Guide. Patrol. Stay. Falcom. Stay. GNC. Stay. Ecom. Stay. Surgeon. Stay. Capcom or stay for T1. Just under 13 minutes after lighting their rocket in lunar orbit, the dream of John Fitzgerald Kennedy and an entire nation for nearly a decade had been accomplished by Apollo 11. Mankind had succeeded in landing humans in the form of two American astronauts on the surface of the moon. But the excitement was far from over. After stabilizing Eagle and ensuring that nothing had broken in the landing, Armstrong and Aldrin scheduled for an early extravehicular activity at 10.39 p.m. July 20th, Eastern Daylight Time. As Neil climbed out of the hatch, he tugged on a small string connected to a black and white slow scan television camera mounted on the side of Lunar Module Eagle. 600 million people on planet Earth tuned in to see two of their comrades set foot on another world. in it, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out a fair amount of detail. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, it hasn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy you. Pretty good little jump. Um, uh, at the foot of the ladder, the lamb foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. I'm going to step off the land now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Maybe an eighth of an inch, but I can see the footprints 
of my uh, boots and the treads and the fine sandy particles. Hey, hello, this is Houston. We're copying. This is nominal on consumables. Great. 
I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. Oh, it's beautiful, Mike. It really is. Oh, geez, that's great. Is the lighting halfway decent? Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes from the winter. Beautiful, just beautiful. Uh, Neil and Buzz, uh, the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you, over. That would be an honor. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President, this is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure they too join with us in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens, have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this Earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done. And one in our prayers that you will return safely to Earth. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but men of peace of all nations and with interest and a curiosity of and with the vision for the future. Uh, honor for us to be able to participate here today. And thank you very much, and I look forward, all of us look forward to seeing you on the Hornet on Thursday. It was indeed a priceless moment. United in their wonder and awe, surrounding those two ghostly white figures waltzing about on the lunar surface. The entire world was captivated by Neil and Buzz, as they spent the next two hours collecting 47 and a half pounds of lunar samples for geologic study back on Earth. They successfully deployed their ESET and read from the plaque mounted on the front landing leg of Lunar Module Eagle. But those who haven't uh, read the plaque uh, will read the plaque that's on the front landing gear of this lamb. There's, there's two hemispheres, one showing each of the two hemispheres of Earth. Underneath it says, Dear men from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 AD. It came in peace for all mankind. It has the, the crew members' signatures and the signature of the President of the United States. Thank you. And we got about, uh, I'd say, 20 pounds of uh, carefully selected, if not documented, samples. Houston, uh, Roger, well done, out in the second box. After repressurizing the lander and spending just under 18 hours napping and storing samples, Neil and Buzz prepared to lift off the surface of the moon.
Their ascent engine had never been tested before. None of them could have been. It only had to work once. thing is that we learned that human beings can operate successfully on the surface of another planet uh, and we don't have to stay here on earth we have a choice of where we want to go and stay uh, either here on earth or on the moon or beyond the moon on a place like Mars I think that was the uh, to me the fundamental lesson of Apollo we can uh, can operate successfully uh, in places other than the surface of the earth uh, Lemon, you look like it'll be a pretty relaxed time here for the next uh, couple of hours. Uh, we'll have you pad, of course, uh, next round or so, and uh, we'll keep you posted on the uh, looks like nominal time. Over. Thanks, sir. And your little maneuver back here a moment ago uh, will put you about uh, 20 miles ahead uh, of the limb at the TEI. Imagine the place is cleared out a little bit after that rendezvous. You can uh, find a place to sit down almost, huh? Uh, right, our moker's uh, about empty right now. We're uh, taking it a little easy. Uh, how's it feel up there to have some company? Damn good, I'll tell you. Uh, I bet, uh, bet you almost be talking to yourself up there after 10 revs or so. Well, I think the, uh, the thing I remember most visually is um, the ascent stage of the lunar module, the ascent stage of uh, Eagle, uh, in front of my window, and then in the background seeing uh, the lunar horizon and seeing the Earth uh, pop up above it, so that you had uh, the horizon, the lunar module, and the Earth all, all in a row. I thought that was uh, something that would rarely be seen again, and I remember that most vividly. I told I didn't read you up any newscast today. There really wasn't anything to talk about. People around the world have had, had, had many reasons to be happy about the Apollo 11 mission. The Italian police reported that Sunday night was the most crime-free night of the year. The world's press has been dominated by news of Apollo 11. Some newsmen estimate that more than 60% of the news used in papers across the country today concern your mission. Houston, Apollo 11, we've, we've been doing a little flight planning for Apollo 12 up here. Uh, Roger, go ahead. Uh, we're trying to calculate how much uh, spaghetti and meatballs we can get on board for Albane. 11, uh, Houston, uh, the medics at the next console report that uh, the shrew is one animal which can eat six times its own body weight every 24 hours. Uh, this may be a satisfactory baseline for your uh, spaghetti calculations on Albine, over. Roger from the hot wires of the Public Affairs Office. Apollo 11 still dominates the news around the world. Things have been relatively quiet recently in Vietnam. GIs on patrol were observed carrying transistor radios tuned into your flight. The uh, West Coast residents in uh, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, British Columbia, San Francisco, all plan to make their areas visible to the three of you by lighting their lights between 9 p.m. and midnight tonight, according to the Associated Press. We do have clear weather predicted there so that you may be able to see Christmas lights, porch lights, door lights, and whatever may be turned on. A little closer to home here, uh, back in Memphis, Tennessee, a young lady uh, who is 
presently tipping the scales at eight pounds, two ounces, uh, was named a module by her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Eddie Lee McGee. It wasn't uh, my idea, said Mrs. McGee, it was my husband. She said she had balked at the name uh, Lunar Module McGee because it didn't sound uh, too good, but apparently they have compromised on just module, over. The New York Times, which we mentioned before, has had a, such a demand for its edition of the paper today, even though it ran 950,000 copies, that it will reprint the whole thing on Thursday as a souvenir edition. And that about covers the news uh, this day. You guys have been making most of it, and I'm sure we couldn't fill you in on any of the details that you don't already know. Out. Roger, this trip of ours to the moon may have looked to you simple or easy. I'd like to assure you that that has not been the case. We accepted the challenge of going to the moon. The acceptance of this challenge was inevitable. The relative ease with which we carried out our mission, I believe, is a tribute to the timeliness of that acceptance. The responsibility for this flight lies first with, with history and with the giants of science who have preceded this effort. Next to the American people who have, through their will, indicated their desire. And to all the other people that are listening and watching tonight, God bless you. Good night from Apollo 11. Uh, no matter where you travel, it's always nice to get home. We concur. It's Apollo 11, signing off. Of all the eight successful missions Apollo sent towards the moon, Apollo 11 continues to be the one most remembered. Future missions brought better cameras, a rover, and stayed much longer. But the danger and challenge and uncertainty of the first lunar landing ensures its permanent place in the history books as one of the highlights of humanity. 100 years from now, 200 years from now, they will continue to look back and remember Apollo 11 as the day Mother Earth dared send two of her sons into the unknown. The presidential speech prepared in the event of Apollo 11's failure, still manages to capture the spirit of Apollo 11's success. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come, they will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind's.